The bulk of Kenyan household budgets, like most around the world, are channeled towards basic items such as food, shelter, clothing and education, leaving little or nothing for a rainy day. British Gashenga explores the saving culture in Kenya. The bulk of Kenyan household budgets, like many other people around the world, is channeled towards basic needs, food, shelter and education. More often than not, little or no funds are left for a rainy day. And with the widening gap between the poor and the rich, is there a savings culture at the bottom of the pyramid? But what we saw is that people were actually saving quite a bit. Um, the average household, the median household, was saving about um, 40 days worth of their income, which is substantial. Um, you know, not huge amounts, but that's big for them. So um, at the median, that was about 8,700 shillings. So when we have really low incomes, even when people are saving a lot, it's not necessarily a lot of money um, in the context of the banking system. So the median household was earning about 7,500 in a month. Um, and you know, for many of us, that seems very, very small. The Kenya Financial Diary survey on how Kenya's poor save revealed the most favorable option for putting some money aside for a rainy day was through saving groups, better known as chamas. Banks have already caught up with a trend to lure these chamas to bank their funds in the formal system with tailor-made products. The microfinance institutions before, what were being called the deposit taking, are now being licensed to operate as banks. So customers have got much more choice today. There is risk, of course, because you don't want to put your money away and not sure you'll get it. But I believe that the microfinance will bring in some competition as well in terms of the deposit we take. It takes about 15 years of paying school fees before one can attain college or university status in Kenya. And as such, education takes precedence with most budgets. And with few quality schools, the cost of education in Kenya is on the rise, forcing parents to plan ahead. We have seen that any product that has a savings element that can be tagged to school fees or education for that matter, I have tended to do very well. I think Kenyans put a lot of emphasis on education, so anything that helps them save towards uh, their children's education seems to do well. There are many parents, especially mothers, very passionate about saving for their children. We haven't seen, in our case, it's perhaps less than 10% of our customers who are this uh, you know, savings account for children. And we must make it much easier and cheaper for them in terms of getting the returns on their investment as well. So w let me say that the challenge is for us as a bank to actually improve their awareness, make it easy for our customers to enhance savings. As a rule of thumb, those who save more are expected to become wealthier in future terms and can easily withstand financial shocks. But are there different saving habits depending on gender? Men's incomes were much higher than women's. So if we look at just absolute balances, asset accumulation, men's assets were higher than women's. But if we make that a share of their income, women were saving more as a share of income than men. And what we saw is that within households, um, men often delegate a lot of that savings responsibility to their wives. On a macro level, national savings are significantly low which poses a great challenge to Kenya's ability to attain middle income status by Vision 2030. Besides, it further hurts mega development planning for the government. The challenge for our country today, Beatrice, is about increasing the level of savings. It's never understood. It's less than 10%. So 10% savings cannot support economic development for this country over time. This is the challenge we see. And that message is not well understood. If you look at countries like India, you know, they have raised this to almost 30%. If we have more savings, we can do finance, oil and gas projects. What do banks do? They collect savings, they collect income, then they lend to those who have economic activity and pay a return. That's what we do. But if you are struggling with 10% of savings, could we finance a $1 billion facility in Turkana? We couldn't do it. Mobile money transfer services have played a big role in deepening financial inclusion in the country. Products like Safaricom's m with a savings option can further deepen the scope for a rainy day stock pile. But what needs to be done, especially in the financial sector, to encourage savings? We need to improve those services. I think what's happening is that lots of people are trying out banks and they're not really liking what they see. 
there are some benefits that those informal devices offer that banks can't reciprocate or haven't been very successful in reciprocating. Um, and I think one of those issues that we saw was that people have this yearning for their money to be working, especially um, if you're low income or even if you came from a low income background. You want to advance. People have a very strong development ideology and um, they want even their savings to be doing something right now, not just sitting around. And when they put money in the bank, it feels like it's sitting there. And of course, it helps a great deal to live within your means. And in the words of former U.S. President Benjamin Franklin, a penny saved is a penny earned.